This is Phil at 20 with solar power electricity and electronics. What you see here is the battery voltage on my solar array. This is the trimetric charge controller. Let me turn the light on. By the way, I'm brewing coffee that's hot. You can't see it's steaming. It's hot. Okay. So this is the battery voltage. Now, going by the battery voltage is completely um, unrealistic for battery capacity. Uh, Yankee Four, that YouTube channel, go check him out. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, he recommended this device. It's a trimetric um, battery monitor, okay? And it'll tell me the voltage the power consumption that i'm using this is negative 2120 watts now it's going see watch this i'm going to go ahead and turn this coffee pot off see now i'll zoom in for you see now it's going it's going on and off but i'm going to turn this off right here so i turned it off okay now it had reached its temperature thermal temperature okay so coffee pot this coffee pot doesn't stay on continuously until it gets to a certain to the thermal temperature you've seen the 2000 watts that's a 1000 watt heater in there so that tells us how much we're consuming right now um i've made about three or four pots of coffee this morning and not pots full pots just like three or four cups so that is our power consumption in watts right here. And the, the line is negative. That means we're negative in it. And then our battery uh, power state of charge is 70%. And uh, if you ever need one of these uh, programs, you need to talk to Yankee because he's good at it. So this is my battery charge station for my wife. So... What I normally do is when it hits 75%, I go and turn it off. Since I've been gone for over a week, I wanted to go ahead and cycle the batteries down and bring them back up today. But it's raining right now, and it's pretty early in the morning. I'm not exactly sure the time. Let me scroll over here. If you look here it's almost nine o'clock so you're looking at my, how i monitor my batteries with this battery monitor i love it it's a trimetric battery monitor you can't beat it and uh i, I can't recommend anything else uh but i'll be back downstairs to show you my battery bank inverter and my charge controller okay this my is my midnight classic Right now it's 9 o'clock in the morning, you've seen it, it's overcast, and I'm making about 104 watts. About 30 watts of that is going straight to this, and then that's how I vent my batteries with this fan right here. It's got an automatic on and off switch, and it turns it on and off. This is my emergency shutdown and breakers. You can see I got my photovoltaic input breaker, photovoltaic output breaker, and then I've got my ground fault breaker, okay? And this uh, has potential to shock you. It's got, you know, probably around 90 volts in the wintertime, 90 to 100 volts in the wintertime under load. Uh, in the summertime, it's about 80 to 70 volts. You can see right now we got 83.5 volts coming in and 23.6 volts on the output. We're making 4.5 amps 
it don't even cover this inverter this thing is so inefficient Ames inverters when they get bigger they're the most inefficient inverters you could possibly buy I'm going to switch this inverter particularly to a Magnum uh, I'll probably get it from Missouri Wind and Solar and you know this this thing automatically switches to 50 Hertz uh, it, it's a it's pretty much a nightmare here's the meter similar meter that I got for Troy there's a similar meter I don't have it hooked up because uh, I like to monitor exactly how much power I I built uh, I, I make so and this charge controller does it I might change my mind in the future but I'm gonna show you what my batteries look like okay so this is one string you got one two three four so here's the positive connection it goes to negative negative positive back to forth all the way over so that's 24 volts here's another one same exact the way it's wired so that's another one another one 24 and another one 24 all these was bought at the, off of the same pallet I changed the tops and I shouldn't have done that because now uh, acid comes out the top so these batteries will probably fail first um, I changed the tops and discarded the original tops these are easier to open but they're messy these are a little bit harder to open but they're not messy I, I, I wish I had kept them it's okay though so I've got two wires coming in the battery bank from this panel here there are two wires going from here straight to here okay now these two wires also connect the inverter at this uh, emergency shutdown now at Troy's place the way he wired it up he had the charging system on one side and the discharging system on the opposite side uh, that's not the way that the wiring diagram goes for a midnight classic I did wire it up exactly the way the midnight classic recommends it the midnight classic recommends all the terminals be connected together uh, at the point where the breaker breaks the inverter so we've got all these tied in with two wires now you would say well just run more wires in there and put it on a separate breaker that wouldn't be a problem for me at all it's already on a separate breaker this is coming from the charge controller let's say I run those wires all the way over there what do I have to do to do it this conduit's too small I've got four of these big wires inside of that conduit and one small wire that's right here I barely got this little tiny wire this little tiny metering wire for the trimetric controller through the conduit it took me two hours to get that wire through the conduit that's how full this conduit is you're not getting another piece of wire through here so uh, look we're going up we're at 135 watts normally I'm making about a thousand 1200 watts at this point in time so and uh, you, you're probably looking at this wire here this is a uh, Ethernet cable um, normally I've got my range extender right here that connects it straight to the modem and router so I connect my range extender straight to this it's got five ports works really good and it allows me to have service throughout my house but I had got the HTC Vive and my computer doesn't have Wi-Fi that can run the HTC Vive so I used it upstairs temporarily I'll be putting that back here soon this is my paperwork to all my solar every single note that I need is in here there's not one thing 
that's missing except the inverter book is upstairs on the desk I mean look I got uh, this is pretty cool it's got a lightning arrester I've put the lightning arrester on the roof it's pretty cool so all my paperwork all my breaker panels all my stuff is right here if I need anything that's even the range connector that I connected to this thing here that range connector so it you know I've got every single paper that I got with my system right here it's always beside my inverter and charge controller so whenever I need it it's right there so there's my battery bank I want you guys to tell me what you think tell me uh, oh I haven't finished yet uh, so I done all the wiring to everything here I installed it all by myself I had some help to help put the panels up but everything I'll put in by myself so you got these conduits that run over this is hollow I can put a huge amount more solar panels up I intended on building this system where I could make uh, it much larger but I learned you really don't need thick wire for a large system you just need high voltage so this goes to my breaker panel it goes up all the way across all the way over to both those panels let's go over here and take a quick look now I wired up this panel I installed it completely by myself So I want you to see what's going on here. First from this panel, look, I'm gonna turn the main breaker off. It doesn't affect me. I'm still running everything right now. It, it doesn't affect me. So this breaker here goes to the inverter because if I don't have power going to the inverter, it'll change from uh, 60 to 50 Hertz and it'll never come back to 60 Hertz there's not there's no switch on it it's an automatic setting which sucks and that's why I'm getting rid of it don't get a names period this here is the backup generator it's got a mechanical bar switch in between these two breakers so if I was to flip this over since this breakers off it wouldn't power nothing uh, right here is our inverter no, I mean not inverted this right here is our connection we got two wires going from this panel up over and then into this breaker here no wait it's this one right here sorry this 60 amp goes to this 60 amp breaker here so this one if you flip it on it would power the grid and I'll go ahead and demonstrate I just turned back on the power okay this is the inverter it's coming from over there okay all the way over there so if I turn this off all the lights in the house is going to turn off everything in the house so we turned off our breaker and then I just turned everything back on it's connected to this now we're on the grid anytime I want to be off the grid I turn the inverter on first and then I flip that breaker over this bar shuts that one off that way they never run together in parallel because the inverter it'll kill the inverter every one of these circuits here are currently running off of solar okay I do currently have a split phase inverter that means if I had a longer breaker panel I could put more breakers into it I could run the stove off of this type of inverter and I intend to in the future I will explain in the what I will do in the future when I get another inverter I'm gonna use uh, use it differently than what I'm currently doing so you can see here all these breakers all these 110 volt breakers they call them single poles they're off okay so every one of the 110 volt circuits that I have in my house run directly off of solar power during the daytime and at the night I have to flip it over because my inverter consumes too much power 
I've done everything I could do besides completely disconnecting you know every single thing in the house that uses tiny amounts of power but this is my overview in the garage right now it's raining so I really don't want to go outside in the rain so if you want to catch a link in the past of my solar rate install you can or you can wait and subscribe and check it in the future so subscribe if you want to see more stuff look we're at 170 watts now and it's raining people say don't make solar power i'm not making enough to even run the inverter but uh here in a little bit i'm sure i will be this is philip 20 with solar power electricity and electronics and i'll holler at y'all later